Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and I'll I'll talk on the uh, techno economic aspect. On on especially the economic aspect is is very important because flexible op operation technically it's manageable and people know how to manage it. Because because it's it's uh, I'll I'll say it's not a challenge because with investment with interventions you can manage it. The real problem is the policy and and the economics of it. Because see when you are operating a unit. You are operating a business, like an engineer when he operates a plant, the, he uh, operates it on a technical mode. But but you have to come out, and and you have to operate in a market with that mindset. Uh, you need to understand actually what is happening and and, and what are the details. So before I present this uh, uh, main uh, economic part, I'll I'll quickly walk you through a brief introduction because there are many. Uh, uh, viewers uh, who are who are, are not from India, so I'll give a brief description of the Indian uh, scenario. Next, please. Next, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the mode of operation. This slide I've selected from from uh, one one station, uh, uh, one day operation. So this is the way the units are being operated. So this is for 24 hours, same day. See, we went down, ramp down. This is at three percent rate. Again, ramp up. In a very short period of time, here again ramp down. This is 15 percent, 15 percent of this load. This is the ramp size, and then there were very quick ramps. Again, there was minimum load operation for this long, and 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 again here it was 43 percent load size ramp down. So what is happening? You need to understand that. So the well, first part is the safety part, safety of flexibilization. So because because uh, uh, many people actually uh, may not like to hear that, but but uh, in fact there has been some in, in incidents uh, of safety lapses during the flexible operation because of lack of awareness. Otherwise, equipment damage that keeps on happening. But but whenever there's a large damage or large and, and there can be losses of life, so so that needs to be taken care of. In fact, the book what Dr. Claudia was mentioning, I have a full chapter on safety. Uh, it's it's I've considered the NAPA code and and then uh, all the incidents that has uh, happened uh, globally. Uh, I had many case studies. With that, I prepared something for the Indian context. And uh, then there's a cost to it. See, each time you bring this load here, one significant load following. For a 500, it is typically around two lakhs. One significant load following if you do it very quickly. This is the cost we had done and, and evaluation of cost of cycling. And 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 whole day you can imagine how much cost uh, we have incurred uh, without uh, you getting compensated for that. And in fact, the the even the dispatchers they are not aware of this. So so this is the kind of awareness that we are trying to generate at the policy level. Uh, at the regulatory level, and 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 many of the generators they were not aware of this. Only only thing is when you perform your maintenance, your annual overhauling, your cost will go up. You need to replace your uh, components at a faster rate, and then you may not be able to recover your OM cost. Tomorrow, it, this this mode of uh, tariff mode may not be there. So when you are in actual market operation, then these things will be really very important. Next, please. So this Malik Saab has uh, discussed already. I won't go to that. So this was just for generating. So <clears throat> many of the plants they have already uh, started operating it, and this slide is already there. I think for two years I have been showing in all my presentations. But this was explained in details by Mr. Malik. So I'll skip this. Next, please. Yeah. Now there were there were a lot of questions on on on. I think one or two questions on batteries and. Other things, so I'll explain you. See, uh, before you choose the flexibilization option, you need to know the relative cost. So it doesn't really matter how you get the flexibilization. Cost is important. So at what cost you get it? So that that will rule uh, uh, the day actually uh, tomorrow or maybe whatever is the cheapest that will be dispatched. So if you see, this is the cost. Different types of cost. And and as you go from uh, uh, here to here, there are different like systems. Again, markets, there are categories. So lowest cost, uh, lowest uh, intervention could be at the grid intervention at the grid, 
uh, RE forecasting. So the need of fluidization will not be there. You can plan ahead. So you don't need to uh, have a fast uh, ramping or some other things. So I won't uh, discuss all these things. Uh, it's, it's a separate thing. Other thing is the market. If you empower the market, a lot of flexibility will be unlocked from the system automatically through the markets. So this also, we are, we are very cautiously and gradually moving towards the market. Uh, be ready to get some more products for balancing, like ancillary services. There'll be some balancing products uh, that, that will uh, come in the future. Another thing is the load. And worst thing is, is involuntarily load shedding. If you have nothing, then, then there'll be a load shedding in terms of cost. And then if you see in terms of cost battery, we are here. So that is why today it's not desirable. People uh, try to uh, compare battery today, but we have made a lot of comparison to GTG and, and, and there's a project also with batteries. In Pondicherry, we have a large uh, scale battery. With that also we're making all uh, comparisons. So battery as storage, it's not feasible. For other solutions like, like uh, say primary response, uh, providing system inertia, other things battery can work. So, so we are working on, on, on what value battery can provide. So storage is not an option at, at this point of time, unless this cost comes down drastically. Another, another aspect with battery is the safety aspect. So in, in, in India, there's no defined safety code. US also, they had it only a couple of years back. They, 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 uh, uh, it was, it was it figured in the NFPA and, and, and other things like fire protection. After some incidents happened in, in uh, US, uh, then only in Texas, there was a big uh, incident. There was a big fire. Uh, there was an explosion also in, inside the enclosures. So today we don't have that. We are just pushing battery without making adequate preparations. So there are other things also I won't discuss. Coal flexibility, we are here. Definitely hydro, as Mr. Malik was explaining, is the cheaper option. Gas is cheaper, but, but unf unfortunately, we don't have sufficient gas. Hydro also, whatever hydro we have, uh, very few uh, quantity we have it at, as storage. Uh, rest are run of the uh, river, and, and we have to run it on, on the requirements of irrigation. It's more of a political uh, requirement. So we have a limited lab, uh, availability right now. So a lot will depend on coal flexibility. So I'll, I'll discuss on the cost uh, of, of, of coal flexibility also. Next, please. Yeah, see, on now, if you want flexibility on the coal, what are the options? How you can achieve? So this was uh, in the nutshell, and this is also a part of my book, uh, uh, it's, it's there also. So these are the different modes of operation and these are the costs. Load following is the lowest and cold start is the highest. So, so and these are the operational cost, means flexible cost. And as you go from here to here, you need more investments. So with no interventions, if you are here. So this is typically a box and whisker curve. Uh, we have done some analysis. Actually, I have done some analysis in, in, in box and whisker and some regression analysis. So just by altering your operational procedures, you can drastically bring, uh, bring down the cost. And, 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 and uh, the cost can be brought down in some instant instances, it, it, is, it is very low. But normally from here, you will arrive at a lower cost. Then with CNDI, operational interventions plus CNDI, system, it can be brought down further. And today I think, Beyond this, very few stations will, will require to do major, major retrofits because then it's a huge cost. Then digital strategy or fleet-wide strategy, uh, you, can, you can still bring down your cost. And then some mechanical retrofit and, and like changing your burners, changing your other things, uh, which in my opinion, that much uh, investment, uh, unless, unless the regulator gives you money or you get the money from the market, nobody will be putting in that money. Next slide, please. Yeah, next slide. Are you able to hear me, Teresa? Yes, it's the next yeah. slide, is it? No, no, yeah, next. I, I, yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there are some harsh reality uh, which we need to understand. 
Uh, one is uh, it's a difficult mode of operation. Even technically, people have to realize that that it's not a, a cakewalk, as as uh, uh, you, I've seen from Postoco and all. They say three percent ramp rate, make some rules, as if that will be done automatically by the generators. So actually, the regulators, policymakers, generators, they all have to come on a common platform, and there there has to be a synergy, and and it it has to be a well coordinated effort. So it's not that easy. Even the ramp rates people talk about. Uh, ramp rate, uh, even uh, the, there's a CRC, uh, CRC regulation also on ramp rate, some compensation. Uh, in fact, uh, on ROE, there's additional uh, compensation that you get on ROE. But ramp rate is on the basis of a defined load range. Like when you are operating on 40% load and then that, that ramp rate won't be the same when you are on 80%. And, and no matter how well and, and even the best operators operate the unit on a flexible operation, uh, there will be some damages. And there will be some cost which you won't feel it uh, immediately. Uh, there will be latent damages and which will keep on accumulating. Maybe after six years, seven years, then, then you'll have some failures and then you'll know the cost. So it is very important to know what are damages that are happening instantly especially for the generators who are actually operating in the business point of view. Like for, for IPPs, if they're operating units, they need to recover it upfront because seven years uh, later, nobody will give you that money. So today, today, in fact, nobody is calculating their online damages and other. There are instruments and it's, it's, it's very uh, easily available and, and commonly uh, actually, there are many people who are making these things. Uh, next. Next, I'll, I'll cover it. I think I have a lot of things. I'll cover some, some of the slides quickly. Next, please, yeah. So this you need to understand. Uh, the damages in, in uh, load cycling, this is the minimum. Uh, hot start is, is more than that, and highest damage is on cold start. So these are the, the calculations uh, we did and estimates based on two of the NTPC plants and two stations of Gujarat. So for cold start of one unit, uh, if it is 200, it's 42 lakhs for one cold start. 500 is 1.7, uh, four lakhs. It's one cold start, and and this number can multiply if you do a bad start. And and uh, uh, this is the average of of the last 10 years uh, data that we are taken from from one of the stations. So if you automate and if you save on this cost, there will be a, a long term cost. So you can see these numbers, actually, the slides will be mailed to you. And any questions you can ask later on. Next, please. Next, yeah. yeah see, these are some of the tiles. Just show you some very fast, actually, uh, what uh, kinds of damages are there. And, and all these uh, details you'll find in that book, uh, recipe book, uh, which, which I'll share with you all. Pipe cracking, it's long term overheating and other damages. Let's just keep on running. Next slide, please. Next, it is uh, moving slowly. Yeah. Next, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is exfoliation in turbine, again, pitting. Uh, damages uh, uh, in, in, in turbine blades. So I'm just uh, showing you the pictures because uh, pictures explain to you things better and you know actually what happens inside. Next, please. This is a cracking of a blade of the PFN, PFN stalling. So when you operate on a lower load, PFN stalling can be there. And then there's chemistry related damages, deposits, that find the scale deposits, this entire thing was choked. And, and some of the tube got overheated and, and there were failures. After that, it was seen that it was choked. Internal pitting. Next. Next, uh, I think we went, yeah, next. Yeah, this is of one station. Uh, the, it, uh, the bottom ash hopper exploded during flexible operation. And, and you see the damages here. So next, next, skip this, I'll. Okay, this is from uh, APRI. Uh, uh, it, it is a benchmarked study 
So this is very popularly known as uh, a Bart Turf car uh, with uh, years of experience. Actually, it is. So the damages, how it changes, uh, how your equivalent force outage rate changes with the age and, and with different uh, types of operation. Cycling uh, um, means very high cycling or low cycling or base load. So these curves are there available. And your equivalent force outage rate also varies with, with uh, type of operation, number of starts. If it's extended shutdown, then also there's, if E4 is 7.16. See, this is a comparison, 5 to 6% on base load, then uh, standard shutdown is 7.16. If it is on load following uh, 7.06, minimum load is 7.19, two shifting is around 10. I'm not able to see that this slide myself. Yeah, uh, just a minute. Okay. Two shifting, this, uh, are you able to see all? Because because of this, I'm not able to see. Okay, next. Next, please. So uh, some of the interventions in brief, uh, Dr. Uh, Claudia mentioned you have the IGF, we did some studies at, at, at Dadri, uh, Simhadri, uh, and then test runs uh, at Dadri, and, and now we are doing two more test runs. Uh, then we did some studies with NG Lab at two stations of NTPC. So all those findings and J. Cole, they did a study at, at Findachal. Then there were some interventions uh, by G, uh, uh, again BHL. Uh, then then uh, we did some studies at CEA. Uh, the condensate throttling was uh, uh, installed in, in, in uh, Dadri. Then uh, all those studies together actually consolidated it and I'll be showing in the next slides. Next, please. Yeah, this is a part of the study in all India uh, basis. We did, like we defined some criteria. This criteria can change. And, and based on that, what are the units which will operate on which sort of mode? Because some units, uh, you remember that curve, what, what I was saying in the beginning, because some units will at 25%, 25.5% uh, uh, of minimum technical uh, load. That means it is it is an average figure. It is, it's not that all the units in the country will run at 25%. Because some units will be under reserve shutdown, some will be uh, running on, on say, say uh, uh, peaking load or, or, or load following, and, and some will still run on base load. Very, very high uh, in the merit order units like Singroli, Talcher uh, of NTPC and, and like Sarshan, they'll, they'll uh, still run on base load. And some units will, will not get schedule and they'll be under reserve shutdown, some even under two shifting. So based on that, we defined this. Uh, criteria was like base load, those units where which don't have the coal, they just cannot run on, on, on flexible mode. So flexible low load, this was the criteria. So all these details you'll find on the net. If you want to see which units, uh, all those uh, details, you'll, you'll get it. Next, please. Next. Next. Yeah, next I'll explain in this because uh, I'll, I'll skip, it's already time. See, these are the main areas where you, where you find uh, flexible operation. Actually, this was an animated slide. I couldn't run my, upload my, uh, my PowerPoint. So anyway, I'll explain you. Uh, these are some of the problems. This is based on all the test runs. We have had around a number of test runs, seven, eight test runs in, in many stations and, and two are ongoing. So these are some of the common findings. Combustion is very important because, because turbine side, you have very few problems. Uh, only you need to see check uh, your temperatures, uh, and and, and, and uh, again, the vacuum you need to maintain, water chemistry side, uh, makeup, and all you need to maintain, not, not much, but combustion optimization is the primary thing. And in that we have seen, the most important is, is to optimize your mills. Like for 40%, for we kept three mills because the operators have a tendency to keep more number of mills into service. Uh, they, they think that they, they are increasing their reliability. But in the two sense, actually, their reliability de deteriorates. 
because the mixture gets uh, leaner and uh, even as per the safety of individual meal you shouldn't uh, uh, load your meals say below below 50% or say 40 45% because in all the test runs we try to establish the minimum uh, loading that the meal uh, should be uh, and, and uh, uh, the load at uh, below which uh, you shouldn't run your meals so that that will vary on meal to meal on your design and other things the type of coal that you have and again again even uh, uh, the moisture content of the coal next yeah uh, in this slide uh, one thing is is pf and stalling problem so we have seen that traditional curve is a straight line the primary air flow curve what what is given by the designers by bhal or by others so a modification has been suggested in and many even in gujarat we suggested it till say 40 or say at certain level you keep it constant because you don't want this primary air this pressure uh, this situation to come in so this is to avoid stalling and for the safety of pf fans also so for for if you maintain it this is no stalling zone so this will in see and from here again you can keep this curve so so the this is as per the international practices and a lot of uh, analysis study and, and design so this we have recommended to ukai first to implement it next slide another thing is balancing of your coal pipe this is very important and and in fact we are doing it in details in and uh, in, in, in the two stations at dvc and dal uh, we are doing it in in details uh, and uh, there is a coal flow measurement being installed by siemens and then how do you control the balancing you measure the coal but you must have something to measure it so this is a variable orifice this is being supplied by bmw it's a indian company being manufactured in calcutta and they have supplied to some of the ntpc stations uh, as they were sharing the details so next will will this will be a very interesting test run what will we are going to do in, in andal next please your fuel air ratio is very important one thing is your primary air uh, that you need to balance yeah i think we skipped it anyway i'll i'll, I'll talk on that uh, primary air uh, on a thumb rule it should be 30% of the air what happens uh, this balance we are not able to keep many places we have seen that the wind box collapses to zero in fact uh, even even in in last two test runs uh, there are number of reasons we are not able to uh, measure the secondary air flow uh, again again optimization of secondary air through so unwanted uh, burners or the mills which are not in service so these are some of the recommendations that is there if you uh, want to find all the details they are there in that book all the learnings from the test run all the details we have compiled and put it there so there is also a thumb rule on on how, how much you should maintain your temperature see we we follow a test uh, 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 say thumb rule <coughs> for for maintaining a mill outlet or mill inlet temperature but that will depend on the moisture and the type of coal your gcv so there is a curve there is a standard curve how much you should keep and and there is a table also which i have provided uh, this is a very brief uh, description of that next okay coal mill scaff is very important many places i don't know where they have stopped using it they have it but but as per the practice this somehow went out but now we are restoring it uh, started from dadri uh, it was also part of the recommendation of vgb and siemens the test and that we did but but we didn't uh, actually need to recommend because this was part of the original system see flexible operation what we are talking it it's not new many of the normal operations what we are supposed to do we didn't do like deretter pegging it's supposed to be done we are but we are not doing it so so many of these things they are part of the normal operations what what we need to do with some additional precautions and and then with uh, additional care next please. yeah another thing is your Uh, furnace exit gas temperature this is very important because you need to monitor uh, uh, the combustion in your furnace so this is one indicator uh, many plants they don't have this measurement but this is also a recommendation that if you have it you'll be able to control lot of things into your furnace uh, varying your air flow and other things 
So, so actually, uh, this is also very important with respect to your slagging, uh, because slagging varies with, with the type of code. So there is a guideline. This is from international literature I have taken. Uh, see, a lot of these findings, uh, this is uh, also based on international uh, literature from the Indian experiences, from my own experiences uh, uh, working in NTPC, and, and then with the test run uh, that we have done, and, and then visiting to various stations of, of uh, IPPs and uh, then, then states. So there, these guidelines are there. So we need to understand on uh, this point. It's not a thing that, that uh, something is given by say BHL or OEM and there's a thumb rule and we operate by the thumb rule. So tomorrow it will all be money and, and there'll be huge loss and, and, uh, and if you are operating in a business, you have to be very careful. Because see, I've seen the way actually IPP operate the unit and then, then the state uh, generators operate the unit. So, so actually both perspectives are different. There, the engineers, right from the beginning, they are told to operate the units and, 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 and they realize they are operating a business. That is what I keep repeating to my uh, even uh, uh, PSU and, and, and state generators uh, colleagues. Next. Yeah, this is the uh, recipe book. This is a cover page uh, which will be shared with all of you. I believe uh, VGB will share a link with you uh, today. And, and this uh, book will shortly be available from where you can download. So these are the things that I've tried to cover in that. Safety, as I told you, it's, it's very important. So in all the documents that, that I was reviewing, I didn't find a mention of safety. But for us, it is, it is uh, the foremost thing and, and the very important. Damage mechanisms. Operator needs to understand that what are the various damages. So I've explained this and then even tabulated uh, like what type of operations can lead to what type of damages. Uh, operating procedures review. There's a standard, uh, uh, this thing also, operating procedure also, I've I put it in the annex. It's just for a review, but, but with few changes. If you read carefully, there are around uh, 10 to 12 changes that which are very critical, in fact. Like when you start up a unit, how do you maintain your primary air temperature versus your secondary air? You need to balance both. Initially, you need more primary air so that you need to reduce your startup time. And then part load efficiency, layup te techniques also. Sorry. Yeah. So layup uh, techniques and uh, some, some, again, compulsion optimization and some best practices what are being followed globally that I've, I've put in a separate chapter. So I hope uh, you'll find it interesting and... and uh, it will begin for now. This book, in fact, I have dedicated to the sector, dedicated to the nation. Uh, on, 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 it was just a gift from me to the sector. Next, next slide, please. So that's all. Thanks, and and, and I'm ready to take questions. And and even after this presentation, also you have my mobile number, you have my email ad, uh, address. You can you can always refer to me and ask questions.